Hi guys, I've got a fun page for you today as part of a YouTube hop celebrating the opening of the Confessions of a Paper Addict cut file shop on Etsy. If you follow Virginia from Gold Dove Crafts here on YouTube, you'll know all about her fabulous cut files and she has finally opened a store where we can all enjoy those. Now the link for the store is down below in the description box and if you wait until the end of the video, I have a discount code for you as well. So this is the cut file that I chose to work with today, Eat Sleep Craft Repeat seemed pretty perfect for me and I had these photos that I had taken, um, selfies that I would taken of myself while I was working at my desk uh, as part of my 31 minutes for 31 days project. Now I've gone ahead and used some whimsical papers to cut out some backings for my cut files and I thought I would show you just exactly how I did that. So this is the cut file that I cut out of just plain white cardstock and instead of um, backing each individual letter with a different um, paper, I am going to back each word with a different paper. So the easiest way to do that for me was part of silhouette. Now before I go ahead and do this, I always make a duplicate of the cut file that I've used in case something goes horribly wrong because I have resized this cut file so I want to be able to make sure that I can get the exact same cut file again if need be. The first thing I do is go ahead and uh, release the compound path of the cut file and what I want to do is delete all of the little inside pieces so um, I'm just doing that manually one at a time, uh, being very careful not to delete any bits that are the outside piece of the cut file. So um, you can see I did accidentally delete the little bit below eat um, and I just undid that so that I could go back again uh, and put it back in. So all I'm doing is deleting the inside of the letters because um, I'm going to cut each word so that it fits the cut file exactly and so literally all I'm going to have end up having to do is just uh, stick the white piece of the cut file that I've already cut back over top of the letters. It just makes a really simple way to um, back a cut file. So now that I've got all of the inside pieces um, deleted, I can go ahead and make that a compound path again. Um, it's just going to make it easier if it's all in one piece. And then I'm going to draw out some rectangles. Um, they're just going to be really sort of loose rectangles, but they need to at least cover each word that I want to cut from a different paper. So you can see here I've just drawn a rectangle around eat and I'm making sure that that covers all of it because these letters are offset. It needs to cover all of the words so right from the top of the A there to the bottom of the T that is going to take into it some of the other words um, but I'll deal with that with a pair of scissors it, but just getting the basic shape is going to make it so much easier for me. So because there are four words, I'm going to duplicate my background cut file four times. Um, I've already done this obviously, so I'm just going to show you once, but make sure that you repeat the cut file enough times um, for the, the words that you've got. Then I'm going to select both my rectangle and my cut file, go to modify and crop, and that's going to give me the little piece that I need to cut out of my background paper. So again, you would do that four different times for the four different words in the cut file and then go ahead and I just, um, I cut all four at one, at one time. I just move them about and line them up on my um, background sheet, match up the pattern paper and then run that through my silhouette. Um, and then I will show you how easy it is to back the cut file once you have those four little pieces. Probably the hardest part of this for me is peeling these delicate little cut files off um, off my cutting mat here. Um, but I just take my time and do it really carefully. You can see I've left all the inside pieces of the letters just on my cut on my cutting mat at the moment, so that I can work out where they go later on. So all I'm doing is just lining up the piece that I've cut, the background piece, with the cut file and just using my scissors to trim off any little excess pieces from the letters above. But you can see how easy that is to then um, 
back this cow file it's like you don't need to worry about trimming out all the little pieces and I know that is like an extra step in the silhouette software uh, but for me I just find it so much easier to let the silhouette do that cutting than for me to fussy cut with scissors I am just totally useless at that I've just added a little bit of um, glue pen around the outside of those the white cut file and then I just stick down the back piece um, and that's it that's one word totally backed so I'm gonna repeat this process another four times to um, sorry another three times to finish off the four words I've cut each word from a different pattern paper um, and I love these rainbow papers all of these are from the whimsical line from pink paisley um, and they were all just little scrap pieces that I had sitting in my scrap drawer so it's a great way to use up those little scrappy pieces especially with um, a cut file with a back pieces are as small as this I didn't have to use up any of my big sheets which means I can carry on hoarding them Now once you've finished watching all of the videos in the hop, head over to the COAPA Facebook group and there are a bunch of scrappy challenges over there with some amazing prizes including free cut files and some amazing scrapbook products sponsored by Rosie Studio as well as gift certificates from Spiegel Mom Scraps and scrapbook.com and just a whole bunch more. So I have got all my goodies out ready to play along so head over and join in. So now that I've got my entire cut file backed, see how easy that was, I just need to put in all these little letters. So I'm just going to peel them off the um, cutting mat in the order that they go. That was the easiest me, uh, way for me to work out which which little piece was going to go on which letter. Luckily there aren't too many of these so it's not, um, not too big a deal. And only a couple of the A's have the little open pieces in the middle and I didn't worry about cutting the inside of the backing pieces out of those. They're so small that it really doesn't make that much difference. Um, and again, I'm just using my little glue pen to stick them on. I do find definitely the liquid adhesive works at best for this situation. Now I have my photo and I've got my cut file and um, I had this white card to do my layout on but actually I realized I quite liked the color um, from the like what do you call it sort of the release sheet on top of the cutting mat I liked that sort of tealy color best so I went through my stash um, and picked out any cards that I had that were sort of that color and I had quite a few to be honest I had four to choose from um, and I liked this kind of blue one best it's not exactly the same as the release sheet was but it works nicely for me um, and it kind of just looked a bit plain I guess so I grabbed out my Liquitex white ink and I'm just gonna do some splatters now I mean if you know anything about me you know that I'm not a big splatter person I don't like the mess of it to be honest so this was a big stretch for me but I wanted some white on the background and um, this Liquitex ink really is the best for doing that it does take quite a while to dry though I will admit that took um, took ages I had turned the camera off basically for half a day um, and came back at night and finished this layout off so um, but you can see how opaque it is it's not like when you use like white watercolors um, or some sort of white sprays they often go a little bit transparent once they dry they sort of absorb into the paper and dry out um, and this one nothing like that it's so perfectly white I really love it um, makes me not the least bit sad to not be using a white background I do prefer a white background for these layouts so um, it really helped me make the blue work I wasn't quite sure what to do with my photo because it's sort of a funny color it's not it's not super bright and colorful but it's not black and white and it just wasn't standing out very well so I pulled out my scraps um, and just sort of started gluing away to create a little mat behind the photo but I wasn't happy with it it just didn't it didn't kind of suit my layout or my style I guess it was a bit messy and I wanted something cleaner but I wasn't sure what so I decided to just 
ignore it for now and carry on with my title um, because although I've got my cut file title eat sleep craft repeat um, it wasn't quite perfect enough for me I'm sure you can imagine what else I have to add to this so I've pulled out these little foam alphas I think they're from the pick me up collection these little navy blue ones um, and I want to add and don't forget the coffee so the problem is is that I managed to get and don't forget the and then realized I don't have enough ease to add coffee to it um, nor did I manage to get these alphas on particularly straight so I, I'm gonna struggle with this title and I've tried to cut out as much as I can so you're not like completely bored but um I'm gonna pull all of these little alphas back up again and then use my ruler to attempt to get them a little bit straighter. But I am gonna have to find another solution for coffee <laughs> because obviously I can't use the navy blue alphas like I had planned. I didn't wanna use white, which was the other side of the packet. So I went away and I found these gold ones and I think they're the same font, but I think they're from the, I want to say, Auburn Lane collection. But as you can see, I didn't manage to fit that all on one line. So I pulled all the little alphas off for the third time um, and moved the coffee down to the bottom. So I finally have my title, and don't forget the coffee, all placed down. And in the end, I will say I really like having the gold for the word coffee. It just helps it stand out a little bit more. Now, I, this is where I want to put my cut file and my photo, but my next problem is, is that because of where the cut file is going to go to fit with the title that I've already stuck down for the third time and I'm not going to pull off again, it kind of feels a little bit out of balance to me. Like everything is very much on the left, but not so far on the left that it's like purposeful. purposeful. So. I need to add something to the right here to just balance that out a little bit uh, and I decided to just whop off a piece of the um, paper on the right there and I'm going to add some of my favourite rainbow paper in behind just to give a little sort of design element on the right hand side which does help balance the whole thing out a little bit. So. You see, I just grabbed my trimmer, I trimmed off a random piece on the right, then I just stuck all of that straight back down onto the pattern paper, and then I pulled out my trimmer again and trimmed that back to 12 inches. So I now have my 12 inch square back again. And I will say I really love that color on the right hand side. It does add a little bit more color to the layout, which is what I wanted. So here we go, I'm back to my photo and I decided just to stick to what I know works for me, which is to keep things really simple. Um, so I'm just matting it with one color. I've chosen that navy, um, navy pattern paper with the butterflies on it. You don't really see the butterflies, but it does tone in at least with one of the words on my cut file. Uh, and to help it stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna mount that on some foam because otherwise everything is reasonably flat on this page. I am trying to keep most of my pages as flat as I can because I am trying to stick everything from this year into one album, project life, layouts, all of that. So um, although I do love me a chunky layout when possible, I am trying to keep it as flat as I can. And this one is definitely going to be one that stays flatter. That little piece of foam doesn't add too much dimension, but just enough to um, I guess give it a bit of definition from the title. Now the rest of the page is like relatively simple, like technique wise, it just takes me a long time to do it. So I have cut out fairly large chunks of this because I kept coming back to it um, throughout the day. I added, started by adding some little chipboard shapes um, and then I decided to go through the rub on pack from the Whimsical collection and just cut out all the little stitches. So I'm not using any of the phrases or anything. I'm just cutting out the little cross stitches and the running stitches and stuff from the sheet and just adding them here and there. Um, and just continuing to add these chipboardy shapes. And you'll see I get to a point here where um, I feel like I've added enough and I did actually turn the camera off. Um, and then I come back to it because I realize I, I don't love it. And I think the thing is, is when you're going to use a technique like this where you're adding things to it um, without 
creating like purposeful clusters of things. I've just sort of randomly put stuff all over the place. And I think when you're gonna do that, you probably need to go OTT with the embellishments rather than just add a few. So I came back to it and I'm just gonna add just an absolute ton more stuff. So I pulled out some, um, just some regular cardboard stickers and I'm just lightly placing everything down at the moment because I am going to shuffle things around but basically I used these stickers and anything that was even remotely crafty related I have stuck them down. So I also added a few of those chipboard hearts before and I did add a couple of the gold ones which helps tie in the gold and the word coffee. And you'll just see, I mean, it's really quite boring, but literally I'm just shuffling these little stickers around. I did add a few uh, hanging off the page and I'll trim them down in just a second. And the other thing I did was to add a frame around one of the photos in my photo grid, just to help give that a bit of definition too, and a bit more of a focal point on the photo, which I really like. It did sort of help me with my issue that I had with the photo with it not being sort of bright and colorful. Almost done here I'm just as you see I'm adding all of these um, stickers but being a bit more purposeful about creating this diagonal with them so they're going from the bottom left to the top right just an absolute explosion of crafty related stickers which suits the page and suits me and finally I'm all done. So as promised, the link to the COAPA store is below in the description box. And if you use the code WELCOME10, you can get 10% off your purchase until the 31st of March. That's New Zealand time, but I'm sure you won't be hanging about. Head over there and grab some of these fabulous cut files now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to keep watching there's a couple more videos on screen. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this YouTube hop, all of the links are down below. I'll see you guys next time, bye!